there are two very, very serious stories about policing in this mm. country at the moment. I just want to start with the fact that police in England and Wales have failed to catch any car thieves in a hundred different neighbourhoods. A lot of people, obviously the vast majority of journeys in this country are done by car, not that the environment lobby would allow us to remember that. And we have so many people who have their cars stolen or broken into, perhaps things are stolen from them, but police fail to catch any crim any criminals, not a single one, who stole a car in more than 100 neighbourhoods across England and Wales. Analysis, this is the Observer, has done this, the Observer newspapers. A further 558 neighbourhoods with an average of at least one vehicle crime a week saw fewer than 2% of those crimes solved, with a suspect caught in charge, according to figures published uh, by data.police.uk. I mean, these these figures are astonishing. You just wonder, if you report it to the police, what's the point? The police are not doing their job. What they were fundamentally set up for 200 years ago by Sir Robert Peel when he started the Met in London. Essentially, the work of the police was the prevention and the detection of crime and the keeping of the peace. The police have moved away from that now because the harsh and utterly unacceptable reality is that if you are of the moderate mainstream in the UK and you have, as these dreadful stats show, your car stolen, your house burgled, your phone stolen, your bicycle stolen, you become a victim of theft or you are unfortunate enough to be a shopkeeper, then you are going to be repeatedly subjected to crime and in all likelihood the crooks will get away with it. In 2024, crime does pay. What crimes are the police actually solving, Peter? What, what are the crimes that when people actually commit them, when they're reported, what can you expect the judicial system, the police to actually do? Are there any crimes that are being reported that there is actually a high level of solving them? Just about. The only crime, when it occurs, that will get a fully resourced experienced team of detectives who in all likelihood may solve the crime is murder. Right. And of course that's far too late yeah. for all the victims of murder and it then leaves broken families and we know tragically so much about the upset that follows. Other than that you can almost kiss any crime goodbye because it will not get a proper thorough investigation in all likelihood i was only contacted late last night by a frustrated member of the public who had witnessed an assault a vicious wicked assault on a group of girls by another group of girls and they were so frustrated because the injuries that were caused were significant and when it was reported to the police, there had been no house-to-house -house inquiries to see if people had CCTV or had witnessed it or heard it or knew anything about it. There appeared to be no forensic uh, investigation whatsoever in terms of clothing being seized and the such like. And the people that were arrested were bailed to return at a later date. And what does that equate to? Justice denied. The police now are an emergency service similar to the AA and the RAC. When your car breaks down, you call one of those motoring organisations and they'll come and fix it. When society breaks down, you get social workers in uniform, yeah. which are police officers, who then deal with that societal breakdown. But in terms of crime that is reported, the, the crimes that I mentioned beforehand, and I think I forgot to mention fraud, let's not forget fraud, which is absolutely off the Richter scale of crime offending, then you can pretty much forget it. Peter, a lot of people will ask what police officers are actually up to all day if they're not catching criminals and solving crimes, which call me old-fashioned, but I think that's what the police should do. You talk about that societal breakdown. How do we get police officers moved back? Because it's not the individual officer's fault Some, most of the time. They are being, they're doing what they're being told by the system. Indeed. The societal breakdown point is a big one, isn't it? Because we're really asking police officers to do a lot of things that traditionally are just not their job. So many frontline police officers are rocking up for work today. So those, those response officers, those that have to deal with the emergency calls that come in by the millions 
to emergency call centres around the country. They are, at the end of their shift, exhausted because they've gone from call to call to call to call. Domestic violence. Things that are happening behind closed doors. People being offended in some way, shape or form. And fights, disorder, a phrase, those kind of things. So pretty much policing matters, but of course still mental health issues. Mm. So many, pol so much police time taken up by officers dealing with people in a mental health crisis because there are not sufficient mental health nurses and doctors working, mm. particularly at weekends mm. and after 5pm, to deal with those kind of matters. So when we talk about the traditional investigation that I as a detective did when I was based at a police station into crimes such as burglary and the like, it's not happening. It's not happening in any way, shape or form like it should do. And senior police officers try to hoodwink us. They disrespectfully try and pull the wool over our eyes by saying, we make a pledge to attend every burglary. There's a huge difference between attending and, so and investigating. Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, a lot of politicians are saying, well, police sh should do that and we're going to try and get them to do that or change the law in order to, to get them to do that. Absolutely fascinating, Peter. I mean, it's, it's interesting. Jackie has been in touch and says, Happy Easter, Peter. Happy Easter, Jackie. Uh, the police have gone from law enforcement to social justice warriors and the hierarchy and college of policing is not fit for purpose. Where is our tax? Where are our taxation going? Peter, you've, you've got your, your uh, thumbs up with, with that one. Jackie is a well-informed observer of, of, of policing and the state of it. And I know not what her background is or where she works, and quite frankly, we don't need to know. All we do need to know is that she's absolutely spot on. The College of Policing, which is kind of like a quango, for want of a better expression, has played a huge part in creating the police service of today. And what is the police service of today? A failing police service in so many regards that are important to us, that affects our quality of life. They've tied themselves in knots over things like what is offensive on social media and what isn't. What should they be involving themselves in and what shouldn't they? And quite frankly, I make no hesitation in saying it again, to a certain to a certain extent, policing has become social workers in mm. uniform and not crime fighters. Where do you ever hear a senior police officer stand up in front of the media and say, we will fight crime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are going to detect crime. We are going to prevent crime. We are going to lock up bad people. Where do you hear police chiefs saying that robustly, truthfully, like they mean it, like they'll deliver on it? No. Nah. Policing's fallen a very long way and it's going to be a huge task, which I don't think modern policing has got the stomach for anyway, mm. to get it back to where it needs to be so that it best serves victims of crime. I want to ask you about another matter, which is that in The Telegraph today, police are spending £19 million a year on translation services, uh, forces spending uh, £450,000 each uh, on average on translation and interpretation. Uh, freedom of information requests show that the office of uh, this is it had previously been a lower figure but um, I mean it's interesting in terms of this 42 out of 46 forces responded to this survey this freedom of information survey and the Metropolitan Police uh, has the majority six mil six and a half million pounds spent on uh, interpretation and translation uh, I mean is this money that should be spent? Is this Does this have to be done? And surely that money would be better spent on officers, well, solving crimes, if that's, in fact, what, what the officers can get to do. It's a huge reflection on the diverse populations that we have within the UK now. And I noticed that there was a quote from this article where a senior police officer was very swift to say, well, you know, much of this is spent on victims of crime. Mm. And, of course, if somebody comes here... Uh, say, for example, a tourist and they don't speak English and they become a victim of crime, then it is right that their crime is recorded properly and, and accurately so that in the in the unlikely event that it gets a proper investigation, the, the evidence can be secured. But, of course, a whole heap of this money 
is spent on translators for foreign criminals, mm -hmm. for people that have come to the UK one way or another and then gone on to not be law-abiding, contributing, upstanding members of society who want to work hard, pay their taxes and make this country a better place. No, they want to come here with the sole and express intention of breaking the law, of earning a living through criminality. So, of course, when those pieces of garbage get arrested and they claim that they don't speak English, then, of course, interpreters have to be employed, as we've seen today through this article, at considerable cost to the taxpayer. Yeah, absolutely, Peter. And that is something that a uh, National Police Chief Council spokesperson said. Anyone in contact with the police, whether as a victim, witness or suspect, must be able to communicate with us to ensure that people are kept safe and evidence is gathered accurately to ensure a smooth criminal justice process. The right is enshrined in British and European law and also extends to tourists visiting the UK who need to speak to the police, as you point out there, Peter, as well. Um, confidence in the police is just so low at the moment uh, and there are so many people who don't even report crimes. If there's something, uh, I don't want to trivialise it, but if someone gets their phone stolen, for example, a lot of people just don't bother uh, don't bother reporting it to the police and we see recorded crime levels we see the National Crime Survey and so on but there must be, so, there's so much hidden crime now isn't there as well, that happens and we don't hear about it because people just don't report it to the police. I speak to victims of crime virtually every day and when I say to them did you report it? Yeah. The most common line that comes back to me is What's the point? Yeah, yeah. And, of course, stats like these today with regards to car theft completely bear out what people are saying. If there is going to be no chance whatsoever of the crime being yeah, investigated... Why, why would you bother? Why would you waste your time? Court? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Why would yeah. you bother doing that? But, of course, this skews the statistics and allows uh, politicians to stand up and tell barefaced lies when they say that crime is going down. Certain categories, if you believe the stats, which are quite frankly not to be trusted, will show that. But the overwhelming raft of anecdotal evidence and what I firmly believe to be the true picture is that crime is on the rise. Mm -hmm. The criminals have got the streets and not the police. And this nation is a more dangerous place to live than it once used to be. I think I agree with all of that. Peter, thank you very much indeed. That's Peter Blackson. He's a former Metropolitan Police Detective and our crime and justice commentator.